If there was any better time to pause for God, it is right now. These past two weeks have kicked up new storms and battles for all of us, and I am eager to study God's truth and find peace within His promises with you all today as we pause for God. Welcome, and let's get started. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience as we are a week later than scheduled in releasing this episode of our Armor of God series. This episode is all about the helmet of salvation. And as we have been reminded throughout this series, we face a daily battle to put faith over fear and put God first. We face daily battles against the enemy and the lies, ailments, and burdens that the enemy gives us. So quite simply, last weekend, I was feeling pretty down for the count. Lots of things were going on in my life personally, and I really felt like my armor needed some repairs. So in acknowledging this, I decided to pause for God personally rather than pausing for the podcast purpose. So In doing so, I wanted to extend a very sincere thank you to you all for being patient in waiting for this fifth installment of our series. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. If you have a Bible resource near you, go ahead and turn to Ephesians 6. We're going to reread the Armor of God section until we get to our topic of today, which is the Helmet of Salvation. So starting at Ephesians 6 verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So as we usually do in this podcast, let's break down what we just read even further. We've been instructed in this passage to take the helmet of salvation. When reading this list of all the pieces of armor that we need, the word take is used quite frequently. I interpret the repeated use of the word take as a command. So in the sense that it's God commanding us to choose and actively put on and use each piece. So if we apply take as a command, we can conclude that we must choose the helmet of salvation. We must actively choose the helmet that will guard our mind and protect our mind and therefore protect the knowledge of the truth that we know. And that truth is that our salvation comes to us from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There is a lot going on nowadays that threatens to infiltrate our mind and attack our beliefs in our Almighty God. All you have to do is look at 2020, look at the news. There's so much going on. And so Right now, in this very moment, I am producing this podcast in the United States amidst a very divided and frustrated nation over our recent election between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. I'm sure you heard about it. (laughs) Our election is over, but it isn't, but it is. It's a mess on all sides. There's just a whole lot, and it's nothing but a mess. And there's so much anger frustration, fear, anxiety, and tension around that alone. Um, COVID numbers are still rising over here, and there's just so much more. So as believers, what do we do about this? How does this 
relate to the helmet of salvation? What are our steps to actively choose, to actively take the helmet of salvation? Well, first, I think it's very important to know what salvation is. Salvation, by definition, is the deliverance from harm, ruin, sin, or loss. And in our case as believers, we believe that saving and deliverance from sin and sin's consequences have been achieved by Jesus on the cross. And we believe in this salvation daily through our faith in Christ. So knowing what salvation is, is very important. What is also important with that is that we remind ourselves of that daily, that we believe in salvation through Christ and his finished work on the cross. And as I mentioned last time, my pastor recently said, we fight from victory through Christ, not for victory. So those two pieces are huge. Secondly, I think we need to really reinforce the fact that we must praise God for being our salvation and be a witness to his truth of salvation in his word. So hearing his truth from his word in the Bible, most directly two examples of this is in first Chronicles and Isaiah. So first Chronicles 16 verse 23 says, sing to the Lord, all the earth, proclaim his salvation day after day. And then the Isaiah selection was Isaiah 12, verse 2. It says, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. All of those pieces are very critical in how not only do we believe in our God as our Savior, but we believe that he provides salvation, strength, and he defends us from harm. He is our salvation. A third bullet point that I have written down about how we can actively take up that helmet, how we can actively remind ourselves of um, everything that God has given us, how we can apply it to our daily battle against the enemy, is that we must take steps every day to actively fortify our mind from the enemy's attack on our beliefs in Christ. So helmets protect our heads from injury if we are to be riding a bike, doing a sport, whatever. Helmets protect our head. They protect our brain, our mind, as I've been referring to it throughout this whole podcast. So the helmet of salvation, if we take it in a literal sense, use that helmet analogy to protect our mind from harmful things that can hurt it. And there's no way to say this simply because it is so, so hard to do. Uh, We are tempted by so many things. And in this life, as we walk on earth, it's a lifelong process to choose the light, to choose Christ and choose things that are less tempting It is very difficult to choose faith over fear, to prioritize things that deserve our attention more than immediate gratification or things that, you know, are all about us, what I want, what me, me, me wants, you know, but we can remind ourselves of Christ's truth and love for us to help fortify our mind when the doubt tries to creep in, when the temptation tries to creep in, when depression, anxiety, worry, fear, anything, you name it, anything that you can identify that you know comes from the enemy and not from God, your Savior, you can combat that. You can fight that with the truth and the love that you know Christ has for you, and you can find proof of it in his word and in your heart because he is there for you. So reminding ourselves to wear that helmet every day to protect our mind from the things that can hurt us and to strengthen it, to fortify it with God's word, to kind of build up that barrier, build up that strength of saying, you know, it's a cliche, but that saying that's not today, Satan, not today, Satan, you're not going to infiltrate this mind of mine. I have my helmet on. It's not going to happen. 
And then the last uh, piece that I wrote down of how to apply this to our daily battle, how do we take up that helmet? Um, I want to spend some time on this because I haven't talked about it yet in this series, but it's extremely important. So last but certainly not least, um, and again, I can't stress this enough, remember that you are not fighting alone. So this whole time we've talked about our daily battles and things that we face that are really difficult and how as believers we can put on each piece of armor and we're talking about the armor of God. And I've I've approached this series so far from a very individualistic approach of like speaking directly to you, the listener. What can you do to fortify your armor and how can you replenish your armor through God's word? Like I've spoken very individualistically, like as if I'm just talking to one person about what can you do for your armor. And and that's important. I'm addressing you, the listener. Um, but at the same time, I, I don't want it to be narrowed to that individualistic approach because we're all fighting together. You're, you're not alone. <laughs> we're fighting as believers, all of us, for God and for you know, to glorify God and make good choices for Him. Um. So I want to spend time on this to remind you, this listener, whoever you are, <laughs> I don't know everyone's name specifically, remember that you are not alone. You are not alone. God loves you. And I also hope that you have at least one fellow brother or sister in Christ that you can turn to when things get difficult. Because in life, Things will get difficult. And this is, I'm getting choked up. This is important to me because, you know, in life, it's inevitable. Things will get difficult. But the reminder of today's truth and piece of armor is that we have salvation through Christ who will deliver us from every difficulty that we may currently be experiencing or still carry with us every day. But please know that you are not on this battlefield alone. And lean on your brothers and sisters in Christ that are there for you. Have them help you with your armor and with your battle. And talk to them and know that you're not on that field fighting alone. So on a personal note to this, I struggle to remember that I'm not alone on that battlefield quite often. And admittedly, I'm quite often the first person to reach out to others. But I'm the very last person to ask for help when I need it. But God's working on me, and especially over this last year, I've really noticed He's placed some truly remarkable people in my life that I'm very blessed to have. And God has been showing me that I don't have to fight alone, and there's no shame in reaching out for help when things get rough. Reaching out to other believers and fighters, like I said, um, helps restore our armor. So again, know that you are not fighting alone. So to wrap up today, These are my takeaways. We are commanded to take. We are commanded to choose. We are commanded to take and to choose the helmet of salvation. And we are commanded to take and to choose to fight for our God daily. We do this by putting on each piece of armor. We do this by fueling up on God's word and worshiping him. We do this by remembering that we are are not alone. I don't know what the next two weeks will bring (laughs) until we pause again on this podcast, but we know that God's in control and we don't have to worry about tomorrow because God is already there and has it taken care of. So until next time, everyone, remember to personally pause for God and know that you are not alone. Take that helmet of salvation and protect your belief from the enemy. The enemy cannot stop you because God has got you. He's got you through the thick and thin and the good and the bad. And next time we're going to learn about our last piece of armor. We're going to bring it full circle. And again, please remember, even though we've talked about it from a you perspective, don't forget it's for all fighters, for all believers and fighters for God's kingdom. All of this armor is for all of us. We've got to work together to fight. We're not alone. We've got God and we've got each other. See you next time.
Thank you so much for taking time to pause for God and listen to our podcast today. The Pause for God podcast is intended to be a supplemental resource to your own faith journey. This podcast is not to be treated as, nor is it claiming to be, a replacement for church. The views and discussion expressed belong solely to the commentators and are not tied to another individual, group, affiliation, or company.